Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 23rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a brief podcast today, and well, first of all, we do have a solution to our December Forensics Challenge, Brad Post Solution, and congratulations to our lucky winner who has been notified. And of course, thanks to everybody who participated in this challenge. And if you participated and wondered if you got it right, well, uh, just uh, check uh, Brad's solution that he posted. And remember back in September, one of the Microsoft Patch Tuesday patches that got us excited was, well, CVE 2021. 4444. It had a CVSS score of 8.8 and it was a remote code execution flaw in MSHTML. This particular vulnerability has been heavily exploited and it relied on the use of Microsoft Cabinet or .cap files. However, since then, it turns out that uh, there is a bypass for the patch if a specifically crafted RAR file is delivered instead. And apparently this is now being exploited. Apparently it's being used as part of a form book malware campaign and well, uh, that's sort of a somewhat run of the mill kind of malware campaign. So given uh, that they're using it, the uh, more sophisticated attackers have certainly taken notice. However, they only apparently used it for a short amount of time. And one problem with this modified RAR format may be that older versions of the WinRAR utility are actually not able to open these files. So if you're still running old WinRAR, then of course uh, the attack will not work. In particular, of course, these type of attacks that go sort of after uh, mass uh, users, they usually rely on old software running on systems and are less successful and probably not successful enough in this case in if old software does not support the malware that is uh, being downloaded. And if you've ever done a COVID home test, you may have used the Loom test kit. I know I myself used one to enter the US after a vacation this summer. And well, apparently the Bluetooth connection that's being used here between the actual test device and your phone is vulnerable and results could be altered this way. Personally, not sure how big of a deal that is. Uh, these tests, which usually you take them uh, under a sort of a quick, a video chat system to basically be proctored are really not that hard to fake if someone is really trying it uh, based on the proctor usually not having a real good view of your room and also uh, n only observing how you take the sample not necessarily how you apply the sample to the tester and uh, then you know how you actually uh, connect the tester uh, to the phone so not sure how big of a deal it is but uh, certainly interesting research and uh, F-Secure who did the research also published a GitHub repository with additional technical details. Well, I promise to be short today. So that's it for today. Hope you get some rest over the holidays. Nothing fundamentally new for Log4j. So that shouldn't add any more work than it already has. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.